have those things, and the average giving in our congregation is probably about $1,250 per year, you spend more than that on Starbucks. Seriously. You spend more on Starbucks than you spend on God for some of us. There's something wrong if that's where you're at in your Christianity. Am I being harsh? Yes. Because when I see it that way, I think that that is symptomatic of what the American church has become. We consume, we consume, we consume. We're so in love with the things of this world that you don't even have money to give to the furtherance of the kingdom of God. It's a tragic thing. People, we need to examine our hearts. I share this with you today because I love you deeply. We don't want to see you die and go to hell. We don't want you to get to the gates of heaven and say, you look no different than the world because you are of the world. You showed up in the church and you thought everything was all right, but you're messed up. I would be doing you a disservice if we didn't tell you that today. I have one more video that illustrates the point before we close today, and then we're going to close by taking communion as a church family. I ask you, you can get mad at him if you want. That's okay. You can get mad at me if you want. You know, our hearts is to stir you to the next level in your faith that we might not only impact your life, but impact the lives of this community that's around us. And watch Paul for a minute. Preaching is a very dangerous thing. It's dangerous for me because the Bible says that false teachers will undergo greater condemnation. If what I tell you today is not true, I'm in a great deal of trouble and have every right to do this with fear and trembling because I will stand condemned before God. But if what I tell you today is true, then you're the one with cause for fear and trembling. And your problem will not be with me. It will be with God and his word. So the only question that really has to be decided is, is this man before us a false prophet or is he telling us the truth? And if he is telling us the truth, then nothing else matters except conforming our lives to that truth. Matthew chapter 7, verse 13, Jesus said, Enter through the narrow gate, for the gate is wide and the way is broad that leads to destruction, and there are many who enter through it. For the gate is small and the way is narrow that leads to life, and there are few who find it. Beware of the false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Grapes are not gathered from thorn bushes, nor figs from thistles, are they? So every good tree bears good fruit, but every bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot produce bad fruit, nor can a bad tree produce good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. So then you will know them by their fruits. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven will enter. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name cast out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and acts upon them may be compared to a wise man who builds his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and slammed against that house and yet it did not fall for it had been founded upon the rock. Everyone who hears these words of mine and does not act on them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. The rain fell and the floods came and winds blew and slammed against the house and it fell and great fall. I'm not troubled in my heart about your self-esteem. I'm not troubled in my heart about whether or not you feel good about yourself, whether or not life is turning out like you want it to turn out, or whether or not your checkbook is balanced. There's only one thing that gave me a sleepless night. There's only one thing that troubled me all throughout the morning, and that is this. Within a hundred years, a great majority of people in this building will possibly be in hell. And many who even profess Jesus Christ as Lord will spend an eternity in hell. So many people are deceived, and so many youth are deceived, and so many adults are deceived into believing that because they prayed a prayer one time in their life, they're going to heaven. And then when they look around at others who profess to know Christ and see those people also just as worldly as the world, and they compare themselves by themselves, nothing troubles their heart. They think, well, 
I'm the same as most in my youth group. I watch things I shouldn't watch on television and laugh about the very things that God hates. I wear clothing that is sensual. I talk like the world. I walk like the world. I love the music of the world. I love so much that's in the world. But bless God, I am a Christian. Why am I a Christian? I don't look any different than most of the other people in my church. Why am I a Christian? Because there was a time in my life when I prayed and asked Jesus Christ to come into my heart. You will not find that in any place in Scripture. What you need to know is that salvation is by faith and faith alone in Jesus Christ. And faith alone in Jesus Christ is preceded and followed by repentance, a turning away from sin, a hatred for the things that God hates and a love for the things that God loves, a growing in holiness and a desire not to be like Britney Spears, not to be like the world, and not to be like the great majority of American Christians, but to be like Jesus Christ. I don't know why you're clapping. I'm talking about you. Did you get those last words? They have a practice in Alcoholics Anonymous, and what happens is oftentimes a person will come into the rooms, and for whatever reason, they say they want to get better. They say they want to get sober. And then a couple months down the road, you talk to that person, they're not acting any different, they're more bitter than they were in the first place, they're still talking and living the same way that they used to do, but they're not drinking. And sometimes they have to walk up to that person, they have to say, I think your drinking career is not over, you haven't hit your bottom yet, you may need to go back out there into the world and you might need to go out there and drink again because you're not ready to get better. And I think the same holds true with the biblical things at times because when Christ preached, it also said that there were many who heard what he said, and it was too hard for them, and they walked away. Some of you might hear these words today and walk away. You might say it's too hard for you. Others of you are wearing the banner of being a Christian, and I need to talk to you today, and I need to tell you if you continue to live like the world and act like the world and talk like the world, as I would for a brother in AA, I need to tell you, maybe you need to go out there and try the world just a little bit longer because until you're ready to get serious about this thing called Christianity, you might love the world just a little bit too much. Unfortunately, the ways of the world end in death. We know that. Many of you have tried it. You found it failing. You found it wanting. And you've come to Christ and you've repented and you said, man, that life is not for me. I want to live this God life. I want to know Jesus. I need to be saved. I can't do it on my own. I pray that that's the conclusion that you would come to as you're here today. If you'd bow your heads and close your eyes for just one moment. I want to speak to two people groups, really, at the same time. And some of you may be here, and for the first time, you're just sensing your need for salvation, your need to surrender your life to Christ. And as Paul Washer shared, you know, the act of just coming to the front and raising your hand really means nothing if there's not a definitive heart change, something inside of you that says, Jesus, I love you, I want to serve you for all the days of my life. That heart change should be accompanied by repentance. When it doesn't accompany itself by life change, then you need to question whether that act ever happened. For many, it's the beginning of a journey, though. As they raise their hand and they say, man, I'm turning my life over to you. That's the beginning of that walk out of their old life and into their new life. I'm hoping that some of you will take that journey with me today. For others of you, you might be here and you've, you've called yourself a Christian. You've been in church, you know, many times and you've heard the words and you've examined your life and you've weighed those scales that are there of your own accord. You've put Romans chapter 12 verse 3 into practice and you've said, I'm judging myself rightly. I'm not thinking too highly of myself. And you've come to the conclusion that you need to repent, that you need to resurrender your life to him and that today's a day where you just want to start that fresh new start as we kick off this new year by dedicating your life to him anew. If you're of either of those two people groups, I'd ask you to do me a favor. Just raise your hand way up high right where you're at. I'd like to pray for you. See yours and yours and yours. Hands all over the room today. Do me a favor. Would everybody stand up this morning? Please stand up. We're almost done with today's service. Thank you for tearing a little bit longer than we normally do today. Here's what I want to do. If you raised your hand, I want to challenge you to make the best walk that you've ever made in your life. Would you quickly make your way out of your seats and come up here to the front? Everybody else, would you give them a warm round of applause and welcome them to the front? Make your way up to the front. You can go stand over here with Pastor Don and Brian. And if you didn't and you wanted to, please feel free to come on up as well. We'd love to pray with you as well today. God bless you. Come on, do a little bit better than that for these folks this morning. Come on. 
Give them a warm round of applause. Let them know you love them as Jesus loves them today.